All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. We're ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Committee on Land Use. I am Council Member Rafael Salamanca. I'm the chair of this committee. I want to welcome my colleagues who are members of the committee, uh, Council Member Byron, Constantinides, Deutsch, Chair Kalos, Kuhl, Landsman, Richards, Chair Adams, Diaz, and Council Member Rivera. I want to thank Chair Moya, Chair Adams, and Chair Kalos for their work on our land use subcommittees. Today we'll be voting to approve LU 61 and 62, the NYPD 116th Street Precinct Station House application, approval of this application for site selection and acquisition of a police precinct station house and zoning map change to map a C1-3 commercial overlay in an existing R3-2 district will allow for the construction of a new long-awaited 116th police precinct on an existing parking lot that is accessory to the existing facility. The property is located at 242-20 North Conduit Avenue in Councilmember Richards District in Queens. I know Councilmember Richards and the entire Southeast Queens community have worked long and hard on this for many, many years, so I congratulate him on getting to this point. Congrats, Councilmember. We will also vote to approve LU 65, the, the 1490 Southern Boulevard application for property located in my district in the Bronx, HPD seeks for the designation of an urban development action area and approval of an urban development action area project ADAP, UDAP. The project area is zoned R7-1 with a C2-4 overlay. The approvals will facilitate the redevelopment of the site into a 10-story mixed-use building containing approximately 114 affordable independent residents for seniors with a 30% set aside for homeless, ho for formerly homeless, and a superintendent unit. A not-for-profit will provide support services for seniors as well as on-site property management services. There would also be ground floor community facility space in a rear yard terrace for residents. We will also be voting to approve LU67, the Paul Robeson Houses in Councilmember Perkins District in Manhattan. HPD seeks approval of a partial Article 11 tax exemption for a period of 40 years pursuant to the Section 577 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The subject property includes two buildings totaling 81 units that are fully occupied. The HDFC will provide necessary repairs to the building upon acquisition. And we have been joined by Councilmember Gradenchik. We will be voting to approve LU 69, the Archer Green tax exemption application for property located in Councilmember Miller's district in Queens. HPD seeks approval of an Article 11 tax exemption for a term of 40 years. Approval will facilitate a mixed-use building with a residential, commercial, and community facility uses. The residential portion is expected to include 387 affordable units. A parking facility for the NYPD will be included in the proposed development. We will be voting to approve LU 64, the 1618 Fulton Street tax exemption application for property located in Councilmember Cornegie's district in Brooklyn. HPD seeks an amendment to a previously approved urban development action area project and approval of an Article 11 tax exemption for property located at 1612-1624 Fulton Street. This application seeks council approval of a 40-year Article 11 tax exemption and an amendment to the previously approved project to adjust the distribution of affordable units. The amended project will include rents affordable to families and lower AMIs than previously approved. We will be voting to approve LU 63, the application by ACS and DCAS for the acquisition of property located in 4917 Fourth Avenue in Councilmember Menchaca's district in Brooklyn for the continuation use of St. Andrew's Community Day Care Center. We'll be voting to approve LU 51, the application submitted by Montefiore, Montefiore Cemetery in Councilmember Miller's district. Montefiore Cemetery seeks approval to use approximately two acres of land located across the street from the existing cemetery for additional burial space. We will also be voting on a bill related to this application, proposed intro 212-A by Councilmember Miller, a local law to amend the administrative code of the City of New York in relation to approval of cemetery uses on land acquired in Queens before 1973. This legislation is required to give effect to Montefiore Cemetery's application. Lastly, LU60, the application to operate an un unenclosed sidewalk cafe at 1-5050th Avenue, the Piazzo Cafe in Councilmember Van Bramer's district in Queens was withdrawn, so we will be moving to file the application to remove it from our calendar. Are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? 
Council Member Richards. I will try to be brief, but thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank you and, uh, in particular, uh, uh, Chair Moya for uh, your partnership and work on getting this done. Uh, today is a historic day for Southeast Queens. Uh, the current 105th Precinct encompasses 12.7 square miles with 354 miles of roadways, including seven major highways. This is more highway miles than a trip to Boston or Washington, D.C., and this is why public safety has uh, always been a challenge for uh, our community uh, between Councilmember Gorodnik's district, uh, I said Gorodnik, Barry Gradinchik's <laughs> district. <laughs> I was with Gorodnik last night, though, in all honesty. Um, uh, it's, been, it's been a challenge to cover uh, such a large precinct and, and really get to community policing. But I'm happy to say today we are one step closer to making the issue of, a long, of long response times in a distant police presence a thing of the past for the residents of Laurelton, Rosedale, and Springfield Gardens with the new 116th precinct. Um, as we move to a community policing model, this precinct will only strengthen the relationship between the NYPD and our community. And of course, I just have to say, you know, we've had challenges with low-level marijuana offenses and um, hyper-policing in our community uh, because of uh, the far distance of the 105 precinct as well. I want to thank Mayor de Blasio for uh, obviously hearing our community's pleas. This has been going on for 40 years, so today is truly a historic day, and I want to thank him for his commitment and also uh, Commissioner O'Neill uh, for delivering on this. Uh, outside of the precinct, uh, we also were successful in advocating uh, for $7 million for the construction of a safe city project in which DOT will teach educational uh, and administrative uh, 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 I'll say just educational experiences to help school students learn about street safety and pedestrian safety and also uh, over 1.4 million for street repavings that are desperately needed so that the cop cars uh, actually will be, uh, won't need to go into a shop every day uh, because of the potholes in the community. We also uh, are gonna have uh, some community facility space located in, so uh, this is a newer model, I think that started in the Bronx, but the community will have space to do programming within the precinct and also a uh, quarterly uh, uh, community advisory meeting that. A community advisory committee that will meet quarterly uh, as well as the construction uh, remains uh, uh, at the site. Um, so I want to thank everyone for uh, their support and Barry Gradinchik obviously played a role here as well. I want to thank him and uh, Councilmember Miller um, and also Adrian Adams as well for their support. So uh, thank you and I, I proudly will vote aye on this when you call the vote. The vote. Thank you uh, Councilmember. Any other members? I just want to bring attention to a project in my district, 1490 Southern Boulevard. Um, really excited about this project, a vacant piece of land I, I saw for the community. And we're going to be able to bring in 114 units of 100% low income senior houses. Uh, but what's most interesting about this project is the 30% homeless senior side. And I just want to point out to the members of the committee uh, something that I'm working on uh, in uh, future projects coming to my district is increasing the number of homeless set-asides that I'm bringing into my district. I know that HPD tries to push a 10% homeless set-aside, but I feel that if we're going to really make a dent in this, we need to really um, increase the amount of homeless set-asides that we bring to our communities. So I have a commitment that every project that comes to my district is going to be a minimum of a 15% homeless set-aside. I'm going to start by leading the example, and I hope that my colleagues in all communities uh, can stand with me and do something similar, uh, especially those colleagues of mine that have districts that are more uh, prominent uh, communities than uh, communities that I serve. So with that, I thank you all. I will now call a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve LUs 51, 61, 62, 63, proposed introduction numbers 212-A, 64, 65, 67, and 69, and to file LU 60. Will the clerk please call the roll? Committee Clerk Matthew DeStefano, Committee on Land Use, roll call vote to approve LU numbers 51, 61, 62, 63, Proposed introduction 212A, LU numbers 64, 65, 67, and 69, and to file LU number 60. Chair Salamanca. Aye or no? Gibson. Aye or no? 
Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Barron. Thank you. Uh, I support the comments. I embrace the comments that you made about increasing the percentage of homeless uh, set aside so that people can come out of the shelters. I think that as a body, we've got to make sure that we look to the percentages that we're bringing to these new developments so that not only can we bring people out of these temporary shelters, but we can not have gentrification in our communities. I believe that when the percentages that are coming into a community are nowhere near what is represented presently in that community, people will be displaced. So in looking at LU64, I believe we voted on this previously, and I believe I voted no then, uh, but it's been adjusted down to 120% set aside, uh, percentage, I think it's about 50% at 120, in bed -Stuy. That means it is about $102,000 for a family of three. However, in communities such as bed -Stuy, a family of three is usually one working adult and two children. So it's not at all matched to those persons who presently live in the community. With that, I'm voting aye on all, with the exception of land use 64, on which I'm voting no. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Deutsch. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Chair Kalos to explain his vote. It's been a pleasure to work with so many of the members to bring affordable housing to so many communities in the uh, city and uh, to see how much we've been able to work with members to really bring things from supermarkets uh, to uh, set asides for uh, previously homeless. And so it's just uh, great work to get to do. And uh, just full disclosure uh, for the Montefiore Montefiore Cemetery item, that is where my family uh, is interned, where I visit quite often. It's also where my grandfather's congregational plot is. Uh, so uh, I believe I can still vote on this, but uh, yes. I, I vote aye on all. Ku. Aye on all. Lanceman. Uh, Reynoso. Uh, I just want to say, just like uh, you've been uh, leading the way and a model in the Bronx constantly, the development of 100% affordable housing, extremely low income. Now you're talking about setting aside a higher than normal amount of uh, supportive housing, which is also something that I will do um, following your lead, make sure that any affordable housing built in my district at least has 15% in it as well for supportive housing. Thank you, Chair, for your leadership constantly on this issue, and I vote aye on all. Richards. I uh, just want to say uh, congratulations also. Sorry, I got to do this. Got to say thank you to people who are watching. Uh, best to beat them, Federated Blocks of Laurelton, Rosedale Civic Association, Community Board 13, Commissioner Nicole Garcia, Philip Heller, Nick Smith, and of course the land use staff uh, led by Raju, Amy, John, uh, my staff member Devin e. Brown, and of course Julie uh, Menon as, uh, as well. So uh, with that, I vote aye. Grudenchik. Permission to explain my vote? Council Member Grudenchik. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to add my voice uh, to that of my uh, dear colleague. Where well, are you going to miss something great? Uh, Donovan Richards. Um, today is indeed historic uh, day, not just uh, for Southeast Queens, but really for all of Eastern Queens uh, from the Grand Central Parkway South. Uh, for 40 years, the civic community there has been wandering in the desert like the Israelites, but today and tomorrow we will vote this out and uh, it will be historic. Um, Best of Betham really uh, deserves a kudos. She started this a long, long time ago. She's still a member of Board 13 and I'm delighted that uh, she will uh, get to see the fruits of our labor. I, I must thank the mayor. Uh, two generations of mayors heard us, but nobody acted until Mayor de Blasio did um, so I'm very, very excited, and I really have to uh, say my final thank yous again uh, for Mr. Richards, who uh, moved this along. Whatever uh, help I was able to give him was done gladly, and I'm very excited. I look forward to the groundbreaking in Rosedale, 
and uh, great police efforts. We had a wonderful event the other night. 400 people turned out for the rollout of uh, community policing in Eastern Queens, and I'm excited about that. So uh, with that, uh, Councilman Garodnik slash Grudenchik votes aye. Adams. I too would like to uh, thank Chair Salamanca for LU65 and also uh, congratulate Council Member uh, Miller on LU51 and 69 and a special confetti throwing congratulations to my colleague uh, Council Member Richards on outstanding work finally, finally for LU61 and 62, the long awaited 116th precinct. With that, I proudly vote aye on all. Diaz. Rivera. Congratulations to my colleagues, Chair Salamanca, and with that I vote aye on all. all right, today's land use vote is as follows. I'm sorry, before, I want to recognize that we've been joined by Councilmember Gibson and Councilmember Torres. Councilmember Torres. I vote aye. Today's land use vote is as follows. LU numbers 51, 61, 62, 63. Proposed intro 212A, 65, 67, 69 were approved by a vote of 15 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. LU number 64 was approved by a vote of 14 in the affirmative, one negative, and no abstentions. LU 60 was filed by a vote of 15 in the affirmative, uh, zero negative, no abstentions. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, land new staff for attending today's hearing. We will leave the roll open for 15 minutes. Thank you.